Welcome to Reread, where today I'm going through the Droids comic book series from the cartoon. Um, I remember when these came out, I did my first review, and that omnibus is one of my favorite omnibuses. I never thought I could get a whole collection of the Droid and Ewoks uh, comic book series based off the cartoon series. And rereading them again, they are just as fun. Now remember, these are comic books targeted at a children's show, so they're not going to be highbrow, and I don't expect them to be. Although, a lot of their topics are more interesting and more mature than Dave Filoni's Clone Wars. Let that sink in. Now, it starts off where the droids, they're going to look for their new master, Lot Kemp, but they can't find him. I guess he's run away, and they've encountered another boy named Jost Ellen. And there's a governor, Grug, who's a bully on the planet, and he has a big battle droid that, you know, kind of enforces his law. Well, Jost finds an old battle droid, and C-3PO and R2-D2 help him power it up, and he goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with the governor's battle droid and wins and defeats him. And the governor is, you know, dethroned. The evil governor is dethroned. And then C-3PO and R2-D2 go on to the next uh, adventure. And that's what they're doing here. Just like in the cartoon series, they're just traveling from one master to the next. Now, these comic books take place shortly thereafter each, one, each, each, each other one. So in issue two, it picks back up where they're on a ship. They're looking for a new master. The two, and these are all kids, it seems like, at first, who are their masters because it's a kid's comic book. So these two twins, a boy and a girl, uh, Nikki and Vic, become their new masters while they're just traveling, transporting them to the new destination. They went, well, we'll be your new masters. <laughs> now, Tig and Velix are in this, and which tells me all these comic books happened after the cartoon series because C-3PO already knows who they are and they've already encountered them before. And basically, they have Tig and Velix have plans. They get foiled as 3PO disguises himself as a guardian droid, an old droid back in the day that has impenetrable armor. And as C-3PO is in the shell of this guardian droid, a bunch of uh, drones shoot at it. He goes, oh, you know, at first 3PO is scared and he sees that it doesn't hurt him. So then he starts swatting the little buzz droids off because he's all powerful and everything. It's a, it's, a good, it's a good episode there, or a good issue, I should say, that plays a lot like their cartoon episodes did. In issue three, the, uh, a, an ambassador hires them to babysit his son, um, who uh, is kind of a brat, and he talks about, oh, wow, you're just like, walk I, I, my dad buys me useless junk all the time. Now he's buying me useless junk that talks. And then R2-D2 says something, and C-3PO translates it as, uh, well, R2-D2, I hardly think it's proper for us to spank our ma new master on the very first day. <laughs> There's another one where he's, he's running around with R2 and R2 says something. He's like, watch your language, R2. I love that. I love those jokes. We don't understand what he can say, so 3PO can translate it any way he wants. Um, now, the boy goes off to uh, rescue a pirate. He kind of you know, disregards C-3PO and R2-D2's uh, advice and rescues Captain uh, Red Jack a pirate captain who basically uses him to rob his dad's ambassador ship, you know, and it all turns out to be a ruse because uh, captain the the pirate isn't uh, a good uh, upstanding citizen. I don't know. Like I guess he thought he was a hero or something. It's the kid's hero for some reason. But then he realized that he's really a bad man. Ooh, pirate! <laughs> and then he decides that he's going to be with his dad, and he and his dad are spending more time together, which means he doesn't need any nanny droids anymore. And R two D two and C three are like, well, let's go look for the next job. Like, no one wants these droids. They didn't have any other... The ambassador had no other use for them than to make them a babysitter of his son. Oh, it's just a, it's just a cartoon series, so I'm fine with it. Uh, and then finally, there is a prince on one planet who is secretly kidnapped by people under the king's... Uh, the, the king's uh, son on this planet got kidnapped by a, another planet, is what you think, but one of the king's generals basically kidnapped the son on purpose, sent him to the other planet to start a war between the two because once he's in charge of the, I don't know, the fleet or whatever, he'll take over that planet and then turn around and conquer his own planet and become king of both. And that's his plan. Sounds like a good plan. But R2-D2 and C-3PO offer, when they're on the other planet, and when they see that it's the other king's like, this is a mistake. We didn't kidnap him. I don't know how he got here. C-3PO and R2-D2 are, like, are like, well, we'll take him back. Well, they go to take him back. Now, this is where it gets really weird, 
because they enter, they get attacked. The general from the other planet realizes that the kid's coming home. He's like, that can't happen. So he tries to uh, kill the ship or destroy the ship. c 3 and R2, something happens. They open up something, the antimatter in their ship, and they rip open space. That's what happens in the book. And they enter a time warp. And it looks like they're in other space because it's like pitch blackness. But when they get out, 3PO says it's 100 years in the future, and they land on Endor with the Ewoks. It's a crossover with the Ewok comic book, which leads me to believe, I think a long time ago, George Lucas thought that the C-3PO R2-D2 adventures happened 100 years ago, like these droids have been around forever. And then he changed his mind later on. Now, C-3PO could be definitely wrong, right? C-3PO exaggerates a lot. So maybe they're not anywhere in the future. Maybe they just found a new way to... T uh, I don't think it's time travel either because these could happen easily within the same... You know, because Wicket was a little kid. He could be a little kid for a couple of years, you know, uh, until Return of the Jedi. And these may have happened... You know, obviously they happened during the uh, Imperial days. But they could have been five years before A New Hope. And it you know, could have been eight years total. Wicket could have been a teenager. He's still a young kid, obviously. Or maybe Ewok lifespans are different. Either way, though, I, I don't. I, it's really weird because I reread that. It says 100 years in the future. Like that's the only way these two comic books could cross over, and they could easily happen in the same time. In fact, uh, it ends because when the droids see him, they think demon. They run away from him, and uh, there's a falling. There's a rock or something that's about to fall on them, and that's where it ends. And it's going to pick up in the Ewok series which I'll get to next time. But first, let me talk about these droids comic books. Uh, I, I think they're fun. I, I've enjoyed them. Uh, the Droids Ewoks Omnibus by Dark Horse is really great. I, I'm hoping they've reprinted this, um, or it's pretty cheap online, I hope. I haven't looked at the price, but I remember the moment it came out, I bought it immediately, and I, I read it, and I, I read this whole thing in one day, this whole Omnibus in one day. It was just so much fun. It was so much fun to read these. They're based off the cartoon series. Um, they're okay, like I said, they're okay stories, and you shouldn't judge them to, to a higher level here because they're based on a children's cartoon. But either way, a lot of fun. Can't wait to talk about the Ewoks cartoons next.